Hey there berries, welcome to another support guide, this time with Karma. Recently for 2021, we've done a Seraphine and a Janna guide. So this is the third in the series for 2021. If you're not familiar with how we do these guides here, uh, we talk through every single part of the champion uh, that will be happening for you for season 2021. So we're going to cover runes, as you can see in the background here. And then we're going to go into a practice tool and talk about skill orders, your abilities, what items you're looking to pick up, and kind of like a general feel of how to play Karma in your League of Legends games. Um, so without further ado, let's jump in straight into the runes straight away because this is going to be quite a long in-depth video. So we have two rune pages that we can have a look here for Karma for you to play in your uh, in your games. We have the Arcane Comet build, which is probably the most popular build uh, that you can do on Karma. And yeah, I mean, it's the, it's the most stable. Uh, you can also do like what I call the Scared Karma build, which involves Guardian. But we'll, I'll go through runes and just explain why. So Arcane Comet is quite good on Karma because her Q is a slow. So it's a poke slow spell. Uh, any spell effects that have a slow combined with the poke are really good for Arcane Comet as it means that the Arcane Comet is almost virtually like guaranteed to land on them. Um, so it's a huge bonus to have that extra damage in the laney phase. Karma is basically a lane bully. So having Arcane Comet in your kit is the most powerful thing that you can do. Some people sometimes run uh, airy, but I think in terms of like if you're picking karma in general you need to be a lane bully so i can comment uh personally is the rune that i think you should be taking mana for band you're going to be burning through your man mana a lot it's a bit of a no-brainer this one uh transcendence gives you ability haste so from level 5 and level 10 you'll get that extra haste in um some people do like to run things like celerity and occasionally absolute focus uh, celerity will work with your E shield, which uh, gives you movement speed, but I would highly recommend that you focus on cooldown reduction, and I'll explain more uh, about that once we get into the ability section, once we get into the practice tool. And then the theme of being a lane bully, Scorch here will give you some minor extra damage as the Gathering Storm uh, takes 10 minutes plus to start kicking in, and Honesty is only really decent around about the 20 minute mark. So, because you're laning phase bully, 20 minutes into the game, laning phase should be well and uh, done with. So, Scorch it is. Inspiration secondaries here. Uh, Biscuit, sponsor gain, more mana regen. You're going to be burning through your mana quite a bit early. Uh, can give you a little bit of health. Sometimes you don't need the cookies. And then you can sell them at the fountain as well for some extra income to get closer towards your first item. Now I like running Cosmic Insight here, um, you can uh, do uh, Perfect Timing, I've seen some people run Perfect Timing a lot on supports and it can give you that situation where you bait out a tower dive and then you go stasis, um, but honestly I think that's more of a high ELO kind of thing, so for now I would recommend sticking with the Biscuits and the Cosmic Insight, you can of course you know switch these up as you see fit if you feel like something is more in your kind of play style like with the, uh, the stopwatch pretty common runes down here the only thing that i really should uh, mention is make sure you're paying attention in champion selection what kind of uh, bot lane you're playing up against if you're playing against like uh, an ap carry like a high midding or a cinder in the bot lane or something like that just make sure you change that to magic resistance uh, sometimes people do double resistances like this, magic resistance and an armor rune. I wouldn't really recommend that on Karma as you want to try and get a squeeze as much DPS as possible um, in order to out harass your opponents. So take the adapter force that will give you a little bit of extra ability power during that laning phase. Now this is the kind of scared Karma build. Uh, this is if you're worried about kind of hard engage and you know if, you, if that is something that you, you are concerned about. I wouldn't really recommend this rune page overall, but uh, it is an option that I wanted to briefly go over. In this one, we do take the double resistances because we're playing pretty scared. Revitalize, uh, you know, works with your shield interaction. Uh, Guardian is, is the only like defensive rune that you could possibly take on Karma. Font of Life gives you, an, uh, well, gives your ally uh, potentially more healing. Uh, one thing to note from Font of Life, it will work off things like staff uh, or flowing water. 
and it will work off like an Arden Senza. So if you are slowing or crowd controlling uh, any enemy champions and your AD carry uh, hits them, they'll get healed and then it will proc those item effects. So that's one of the uh, the interesting things about Font of Life that not many people actually kind of realize. So your Q and your, like, your Mantra Q, which we'll talk about later, will put that Font of Life debuff effect and also the root effect of your W. Inspiration, you're definitely going to need some mana regeneration in here. So you have two options here. You've got Biscuits and Cosmic Insight, which is my favorite here. Um, you could opt into also Mana Flow Band and potentially something like... Um, it, since uh, Transcendence is very solid, it's a very solid basic rune. I mean, this is another really good rune page. Alternatively, you could also do Tenacity Pickup here as well if you're worried about a lot of crowd control on the enemy team. And then picking up the presence of mind just to give yourself some mana regen. This presence of mind isn't as strong in terms of mana regen in normal laning phase. If you do get an assist, you'll get a, a bunch of extra mana back from the uh, the takedown restore. But overall, um, you're probably looking more towards like the sorcery or the inspiration tree for that extra mana regen, and it's as it's more stable. Um, oh, one thing I should probably note actually here is uh, ability haste, not. Um, not adaptive force, a cooldown reduction is, is really, really important on Karma. So something like this is your kind of standard rune page on Karma, everything here. Um, but, but as I mentioned before, like th this is probably very close to being very good as well. It just takes a little bit longer for the mana regen to kind of like show up uh, in the laning phase. But if you, you feel like you don't need the mana urgently, that you probably will get overall more value in a game just because of the extra cooldown reduction you're going to get from Transcendence. So this is also a very strong build in terms of if you're having to go Guardian in the primary. What we'll do next, we'll go jump over into the practice tool. Let's pick us up some Karma. Uh, in terms of runes, as generally you're going to be looking to be uh, a lane bully, as I mentioned, Arcane Comet, and then in Summoners. The Ignite is a very strong choice. If you're worried about a lot of Assassins, the uh, the exhaust is a very solid option as well. So basically, your two main options are ignite or exhaust. Um, I would lean towards ignite as karma is meant to be a lane bully, and honestly, you should be looking to try and win that laning phase uh, as her scaling throughout the game isn't particularly great. The first thing we talk about here is we'll talk about her abilities. Karma is one of the few champions in the game that actually starts off with her ultimate. Um, I believe another one is Jason, another one is Nidalee. Might be one or two others that I've missed out that feel free to let me know in the comment section down below. So what we'll do is we'll hit level 6. So level 1 you'll actually start off with your mantra. So your mantra is something that augments your Q, your W and your E. Uh, when you land abilities, so off of your passive, when you land abilities uh, on enemy champions uh, or you do auto attacks, you'll actually reduce the cooldown of your mantra. Now you'll be using your mantra pretty much every time it's off cooldown um, and doing mantra plus a damaging ability will also work towards reducing the cooldown of your mantra. So the most um, the common thing, thing that people uh, use Karma for is Mantra Q. So let's get some target dummies here. Let's start off with one. So her basic Q fires out a little bolt. Kind of medium range. But it does do like an AoE around on the hit. So um, when it does finally land, it does an AoE circle. Um, where it lands basically um, so if the target is so in this case here it's going to hit the very front of this target of the target dummy and the circle is going to start the center of the circle is going to start at the front of the target dummy as that's where it's hit so if you have a look at the arcane comet circle it probably show it the most mm, not quite because it's targeting the champion so the circle is actually like in front of the unit not so far behind uh, you can kind of see it with that spell animation. It's not clear, but it won't go like the Arcane Comet was doing, which is actually focusing on top of the champion itself and then doing a circle around that. Just something to take note of, uh, because if someone is is, is uh, 
behind a target, you're not going to be able to actually hit it with the basic Q. So what the mantra does, when you pop your ultimate, you've got a little while to use it. This is the buff down here, slowly ticking away. But if we throw out our mantra Q, it does a bigger circle. And then it leaves a circle on the ground that detonates again. Both the initial hit of the mantra Q and the, uh, the lingering circle, which also does secondary damage, will also uh, count towards the passive of reducing your mantra cooldown. Also, one other thing to take, uh, take note is that there is no champion cap for your Q. So say, for example, if we put down a couple more target dummies. So we've got three target dummies there. What we'll do is we'll throw out our mantra out into the distance to put it on cooldown. So you can see there's a 30 second cooldown now. So if we hit Q on the middle target, it should hit the two side targets. Um, and according to this, it will reduce it 3.5 seconds, but it will go down considerably more than that because it will count per champion. So if we throw that out, you see how it, we basically took off about 11 seconds of the cooldown to Mantra. And it's the same with the actual Mantra itself. So if we do Mantra Q, it's gone down to 20 and then back down to 10 again with the secondary AOE portion that Mantra does. So you can see how it's beneficial to hit multiple targets if possible in fights with your Q. And also, um, we'll showcase it here if I throw off the mantra off into the distance again. Also, attacks do count towards the mantra cooldown. So particularly like early on in the laney phase, like, you know, you're looking to do auto hits anyway just to ramp up the gold from spell thieves. So auto attacks will reduce the cooldown of your mantra. I don't think a lot of people know that actually, so fun little fact. Next we're going to move on to the W. So W basic is a tether which goes out from you to the enemy player. Does initial damage and then two, after two seconds time it will do another secondary portion of damage. And they also end up being rooted. And it reveals the target as well. So if you're playing against someone who can go stealth in the middle of the fight, um, it will actually reveal the target so you can find them. Uh, it's also kind of useful as well if you've got a W tether on a champion be just before they walk into a brush. Uh, it means that you don't have to plant a ward in the brush to see them as the revealing uh, factor of the W will show the target. Now the mantra up portion of this will restore... Uh, at the initial usage of using the uh, the mantra, so R W will heal you for twenty percent of your maximum health, at least on base, without scaling, and then the secondary portion as well will heal you again for another twenty percent. So you won't really be using uh, the mantra W too much in lane. It's a pretty nice tool to um, effectively get healing in kind of like situations where you're going to be taking a lot of damage. There's been times when I've played Karma and I've actually sub managed to survive out the situation because I'm effectively healing for like nearly half my uh, half my maximum HP. Um, and one other thing is that the uh, the root duration is increased by one extra second uh, on the uh, on the mantra, going up to I believe 1.25 overall. So the uh, the root duration does increase if you decide to use the mantra W. Uh, it can be pretty nice um, in terms of like catching people out. I'll go through some little um, expert tips uh, in a second so once we cover the E as well and what you can do with the tether in order to um, make the most out of use out of it, particularly in the laning phase or helping to peel for your AD carry. But this is a tether, so if you do walk out of range, the tether will end. Uh, you know, the same if the enemy flashes away from it. If the tether breaks, then you won't get the secondary portion of damage, nor will you get the root. So we talk about uh, Karma's E is a single target uh, shield, so you can cast it on your ally, you can cast it on yourself as well. And also it gives uh, your target movement speed, a huge chunk of movement speed actually, and it goes all the way up to 60% as uh, at the moment. Um, with the, the, the mantra, with the mantra unlock, you're going to get that, it's going to affect everyone nearby. Um, 
The range is quite generous. So if you can see the, I believe it's the secondary portion of the circle, um, should affect mantra wise. Uh, but you can see that the range is pretty generous. Let me see, actually test it out. So that target dummy is outside the range. Let's pop mantra and E. Yeah, so the, the bigger circle is the indicator of how far that mantra goes. So there are good good things and, and bad sides to this. So you're shielding up your entire team and you are giving your whole team movement speed. The downside is though, is instead of doing something like a mantra Q, uh, you're reducing the chance of being able to get another mantra, if that makes sense, because uh, it's easier to do R, Q on the damaging ability, this one here, to then effectively get the mantra off again, and then the mantra off again. So if you're having to resort into doing a mantra shield for your team, it does mean it's going to be much more difficult for you to get the mantra down and called down. But in this build that I'm showing you, particularly with the runes that we've already taken with the transcendence and with the ability haste rune as well, you're going to be able to get this mantra down to a reasonable cooldown uh, regardless. I mean, every time you get to put a point in the mantra, it's going to make the augmented effects stronger for your abilities, but it's also going to reduce the, the cooldown of your mantra just by a little bit as well. So some little tips uh, that you can do in the laning phase. One thing I like to do uh, if a target is kind of isolated by themselves, I like to self cast E. Uh, there's a little hotkey that you can kind of do that, which is by default is Alt E. So I'll Alt E myself. So it gives me the shield, but it also gives me the movement speed as well. So giving myself movement speed in order to potentially chase down uh, an enemy AD carry or whoever's squishy in the bot lane. So self cast my E. And what I'm doing is I'm casting my W tether in and making sure that I'm in range. And while you're doing that, while you're in the range, you can do your Q as well, just to slow them down. Um, and basically it ties them down, makes sure they're rooted down and uh, allows your AD carry to follow up on that. Now, while you're doing this, you need to think about what kind of mantra you want to do for this. Usually uh, quite early on the laning phase, if you run in like that, you're probably gonna take a decent amount of damage. So actually a favorite of mine is to do uh, self cast E mantra W. That way, also the root effect lasts one second longer, so they're stuck in that situation a bit longer. Particularly useful if your jungler's coming down to help facilitate that play. And then you're just throwing out Qs and any auto attacks you can just to get your mantra off cooldown again. And you know, from that point onwards, then you need to decide what kind of mantra you need so you can shield up your entire team to, to get out or continue chasing. You could. You might need to exit. They might have just flashed away, so you might have to execute them by like doing a, a mantra Q. But there's lots of like little things that you can do there. So really, Karma's only got three abilities, but the mantra makes it so that you kind of have six. So makes you kind of think about what you want to be doing, um, and you can get punished if you use the wrong mantra because, uh, you know, as I said before, like if you're having to resort to do initially starting off with a mantra E. Um, it can make it harder for you to get procs off if you could have done maybe a, a mantra Q instead on multiple targets. But the mantra Q in particular is very good in the laning phase because the base damage is, is quite high. But once the laning phase progresses on into the mid to late game, the damage on the Q is actually pretty rubbish. Um, I should probably also add that the Q also has a slow, so it's quite good for like disengaging and continuing to help peel or helping to chase down as well. So like in the Tether situation, like if I'm self-casting, like Wing and then Qing, it's also, they're also, not only am I faster than them, but you know, they're also getting slowed as well. Um, but yes, the, the base damage uh, on the on the Mantra Q is really good in lane, but it does fall off heavily. Um, as the game progresses, as you won't be building that much ability power from the items. Uh, instead, you'll be building some sort of like semi enchanter build, which I'll cover it for you shortly. Uh, but a common thing to do on Karma and on some champions that you decide to do poke with is actually just start off with three Qs, three points in Q, just so they have enough harassment in the laning phase. And then from that stage on, um, you're probably leaving the, the W at one point and then maxing your shield. So you're getting your shield up to with five points as quickly as possible 
and then you're actually then putting points into your W. So you're leaving your Q at three points for the entirety of the game until you have nothing else to put points in. And you're going to be putting um, points in your ultimate whenever you can. So let me showcase like what a kind of like a normal level up build is. So you, you've got your your shield fully maxed up, and then it's like you've been prioritizing your mantra, but then you're leveling up your W, and then finally finishing off your Q. The reason behind this is because, as I mentioned, the base damage on the Q is pretty bad. Um, there's no slow increase either on the Q per point, but there is a root duration increase on the W, which uh, per point isn't particularly crazy at currently, you know, 0.15, but at, at, at that kind of stage, like, crowd control is better than damage uh, in the role that you're playing. So three points in Q, maxing your E, maxing your W, and then when there's no, nothing else to put points left in, then you're finishing off your Q. And obviously taking your mantra alt points whenever you can. Uh, during team fights and things, um, it's going to be virtually impossible for you to kind of do that laning phase trick of speeding yourself up and, and Wing somebody. Uh, sometimes you're tethering like a single targets that manage to get into the back line just to help uh, get them off like some of your squishy targets. But doing Mantra Shield is a very common thing to do to help initiate team fights, disengage from team fights, or just shielding in general for the fights. You're going to be picking up an item later called Chemtech, and uh, that will help uh, add more utility to your team by giving your team extra Grievous wins. But we'll talk about that in the item section in just a second. So the most common thing um, when, when those fights are leading up is you're doing that Mantra Shield, and then, as, a, as I've mentioned before regarding getting your magic core down as low as possible, you're just trying to harass, land as many skill shots as possible with your Q, you know, doing your W when you initially can as well, and then when your mantra's back up again, you're having to think about, as the fight progresses, do I need to reshield my entire team, which is the safest option? Do I prioritize crowd controlling a single target that's causing us a problem or trying to get away? Um, or is you know hitting multiple targets with a mantra Q is that the best thing to do so you're asking yourself a quite a few amount of questions about which particular ability you want to augment sometimes it's just because like you're using it because some of your base abilities are on cooldown and you just need to panic mantra something that's a valid reason as well not ideal but it, it is uh, sometimes a valid situation that does happen Let's jump over into items now. So, as we did mention um, before, we'll be taking the Spell Thieves. You're a lane bully. Um, recently, as of 11.5, they made it so you can pick up the two health potions in one go, which is fab. And then, as you're progressing through the tree, uh, even though you are a lane bully, uh, boots are cooldown, but boots are absolutely huge. Uh, as we mentioned before, cooldown is really, really good on karma. Uh, particularly to get that mantra down lower, but the, the the lower your cooldowns are, the more mantras you'll get, which is the whole theme of, of Karma, is mantra, 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 in order to augment your abilities. So we've got the, the cooldown reduction boots, that's also going to give you more movement speed, the boots are fairly cheap as well, so more movement speed equals potentially entering into tether range uh, of more enemies, especially in the early game. Um, my favorite to do here in terms of items is the Moonstone. Uh, I've seen some players do Imperial Mandate. So the argument right now between those two items is Imperial Mandate is good if fights are ending quickly. So say if both teams are just full of assassins, everyone's going to go bam, 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 people are dead. So getting that slow. So this Imperial Mandate will proc off your Q. And it can proc off the root portion of your W. But if you do your Q or your Mantra Q and you hit multiple targets, it's going to put that debuff on the Imperial Mandate debuff on them. And then if your ally hits them, then the, the damage will detonate and you and your AD carry or whoever hit them will get 20% movement speed. The damage is respectable, uh, but if I, if I end ending quickly, then it's quite good. The downside to Imperial Mandate and with the mythic, the, the this mythic item in particular, Mythic items have a unique passive. The more legendary items you have, so basically more items that you have in your inventory that are fully completed, they're basically called legendary. Uh, that includes like the spell thieves fully completing 
uh, down the chain off into Shard of True Ice. That counts as a legendary item. Uh, you get 15 a bit extra ability power, which isn't great. When you look over to the Moonstone, however, and you have a look at that uh, legendary item passive, uh, this has 5 ability haste, which is what I was mentioning that we want more of. So cooldown reduction is a passive on the Moonstone, which makes it already a particularly nice item. Um, and also, it's not very, it's not too hard to stay in combat at, uh, with the Moonstone. The more you're in champion combat, the more heals you're going to be getting off. And as you'll be whacking out more and more spells with more and more cooldown reduction, uh, it's very easy to stay in combat and allow the Moonstone to generate more healing uh, over time as well. So my personal favorite here is Moonstone, but I would opt into an Imperial Mandate if I felt like the fights were going to be ending pretty quickly. So we've got the Moonstone in. Now my next favorite item, particularly if there's, even if there's only like one uh, champion on enemy team with a lot of healing, uh, it's actually the Chemtech Putrefire. Uh, in terms of healing, don't just look at the champions. Like for example, Vladimir, he's got a lot of self-healing, so you'd always want Grievous Wounds for that. But there are some items in the game that you need to be aware of. So if someone else on, your, on the enemy team has, for example, a Moonstone, that will generate a lot of healing. Uh, if they have, I can't remember the exact name of it, but one of them, well, Ravenous Hydra, Bloodthirster, um, Vamp uh, Blade of the Ring King also generates a lot of healing as well. You've got the Immortal Shield Bow, Eclipse also heals for a fair chunk, uh, Divine Sundra can also heal, so there's a lot of healing items in the game, and generally it's pretty safe just to pick up the Chemtech Putrefire. So whenever you're shielding or healing an ally, so back to Moonstone, Moonstone healing people will also proc this effect. Uh, whenever you're shielding or healing allies, uh, their next ability or damaging effect will apply 60% Grievous Wounds. So as you can imagine, if you shield up multiple people in a team fight, all of you are going to be getting, including yourself, uh, will be getting the, the Chemtech Putrefire buff. So you're going to be doing 60% Grievous Wounds basically to everyone around about initially at the start of the fight. Uh, and that applies for three seconds. So if you're able to get another mantra off, uh, E off, then you know that's great. Uh, if you're just doing single target poke after this as well, it will still apply 40% Grievous Wounds. Um, but ideally, you know, you're trying to get as many healing procs off of Moonstone and Mantra Shields off in order to proc the Chemtech as much as possible to apply a lot of Grievous Wounds. This item is also really nice as well because A, it's cheap. B, it has a lot of ability haste. Once you go from the Bandle Glass, which has 10, you go over to the Chemtech and you get another 10. And it also counts as the legendary item, so it's another 5 on top of that. So with the Moonstone, it's 25 ability haste, which is huge. Uh, for an item that has this kind of effect in, in your games. So huge utility, huge amount of cooldown reduction, and the, basically the perfect support item in general. After this, you can look into something like a Staff of Flowing Water. Unfortunately, this item hasn't got any healing, but whenever you heal or shield an ally, now back to the Moonstone and your Mantras, um, so you can see how all of these items have synergy. Uh, whenever you heal or shield an ally, you both get 15% movement speed and you get extra ability uh, power, um, which is, once again, huge. Movement speed, uh, you're already giving people 60% uh, movement speed with your Mantra E. You're going to be giving them an extra 15% for three seconds, so they're still going to have movement speed uh, even after your shield effect ends for a little bit. And just basically giving constant like movement speed to your entire team just makes you you and your team very very hard to hit uh, and allows you to have a lot of options in terms of engaging and disengaging so this is a very common build uh, in terms of uh, playing karma and, and on some of the enchanters as well you'll definitely will see you know the Safa flowing water moonstone chemtech bought uh, eventually by the uh, the bent end of the game if you do find yourself, um, you know, needing more things, you can go into the Wardstone. I won't actually be able to upgrade this in this game because I've placed 20 wards. Um, but once you make your way down, it is a very nice item. It allows you to have four stealth wards and two control wards at the, set up at the same time. Uh, if you make it all the way to the end as well, you're going to be getting 
It says 40 ability haste, but which is a huge amount anyway, but you're going to be getting an extra 5 on top of that with the Moonstone passive, as this item will then count as a legendary item, and you're giving yourself 10% more <laughs> base movement speed as well. So you're going to be very, very speedy for the entire game and give yourself a lot of uh, map vision and control uh, as you enter, while well, you probably are already in the uh, the end game, uh, around about the 30-ish mini mark. 30 minute mark if you uh, have acquired this item so that's basically the build you're looking at for pretty the large majority of the game um, if you're finding that you're dying but to assassins a lot you could probably replace the staff of flowing water for something like a redemption you can use the redemption heal when you're dead a lot of people don't know that but you can um, and you have also the option of a zonias if you wish which will give you a stasis effect, which you can potentially buy your team a little bit of time uh, to save you. Um, it's These items aren't ideal, but sometimes you just have to go into those situations. As of right now, I wouldn't really recommend Ardent Sensor, but say, for example, you had like three heavy auto-attacking champions. Like, I should probably rephrase that. Three like very fast auto-attacking champions on your team. Ardent Sensor will give them more attack speed and more magic damage on those auto attacks. Um, but Ardent Sensor, I feel right now, compared to Staff of Flowing Water, is extremely weak. So I think Staff of Flowing Water is the, the clear uh, winner, personally. But the Redemption and the Zonias are valid options against Assassin teams. And if you're just finding yourself constantly dying, you might even want to pick up the Zonias as your like second item after your Moonstone, just to, just to make it so that you're actually in the team fights. Um, other than that, there's nothing else really I feel like um, I, I need to cover. I covered all of the the ability orders, the runes, the items that you should be doing in your games. Just make sure, you know, when you're in the laning phase, uh, you are being a lane builder, you need to be proactive. Um, don't be too afraid, um, especially if you have an aggressive AD carry like a Lucian or a Draven that can follow up on your plays. Like Eing yourself and Wing is very, very, very strong in laning phase. Um, you know, with the mantra W, uh, usually ideally, just to make sure that, you know, you are healed up and you don't die from that engage, is extremely strong. And I don't see enough karmas using that at all. Um, but, you know, in some situations, you know, if you have to just stay back and you're having to do like max range mantra poke, uh, that's totally normal as well. Just getting them down, just poking up as much as possible. One thing I should probably add, actually, is actually see if we can get like a little bit of a laning phase situation started. Let's get the, uh, where are my minions? Uh, bear with me, sorry. Teleport over to here, let's get into lane. All right, let's get these minions and let's fast forward 10 minutes. What I want basically is a laning phase. Okay, these minions are super scuffed, but we can run with this anyway. So say, for example, you have an enemy. This is way too many minions. This isn't what I expected. That's an enemy champion there. If you can like have it so that you, in the laning phase, if there's minions nearby, this is leveling up the target diamond. That's crazy. You can use the minions to... Because the, your Q has an AoE around it. So you can use the, the minions to... So if they're standing behind it, the, the caster minions acting like they're safe. If you actually Q the caster minions, which is no way I'm going to have to show you because the minions are just super trolling right now. But um, if you're able to Q the minions and then it will hit... The, the circle will hit behind it as well. So... By doing that, you will be pushing in the lane because you'll be lowering the health of the enemy minions. So it's you're going to end up being pushing into their turret. But if you can do this a lot, particularly to AD carry, which is hiding behind caster minions, like if I hit him, pretend there's like caster minions in front, the Q will hit at the back, and that's a good way to harass the enemy as well. On that note, I don't feel like there's anything um, further to add. I wish you all the best of luck in your solo queue games. And if you're doing the Guardian build, your build is going to be looking extremely similar to this. I wouldn't do something like a locket. It's a lot of minions. Um, so yeah, your build will be very, very, very similar 
um, to this. So good luck in your solo queue games. Karma, you know, is is very good in the lower ELOs for sure. So if you're between iron and gold, she's very, very good at that lane bully. And as, as you said, E and Mantra W, very strong in that laney phase. And I hope you make the most of that out of it. If you do like these support guides, then uh, I am making more for season 2021. Make sure you subscribe to get caught up to date with those. Uh, next we're looking at is probably, don't quote me on this, potentially Zillion so or or a pike i'm not sure yet but so maybe let me know down under in the comment section below which one i should probably focus on on the zillion or the pike next but don't forget stay very awesome and um yeah hope it helps you out take care guys bye bye